Well, hello. Welcome to our continuing devotional. We're currently in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and we covered part verse 3 in part last week, but I want to continue with that because it leads naturally into verse 4. So let me reread verse 3, where it says this, chapter 2, verse 3, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. We talked about the rebellion. We talked about the Antichrist. But let me note two things in this verse before I move on to verse 4. First of all, we see the character of this of this world leader, this Antichrist. We see that he is lawless. His character is lawless. That means he opposes all moral restraints. He practices and promotes unrestrained sinful indulgence. And in the world we live in today, it's very easy to see how such a leader might be applauded, appreciated, lauded in every way. Because he's saying, basically, do whatever you want to do. If it feels good, do it. Well, he's the man of lawlessness. He's a man who has no moral restraints. He doesn't promote them. He doesn't practice them. Secondly, his, his second part of his character is he's called the son of destruction. That means he's like Judas. Judas was also called the son of destruction. Judas appeared friendly to Christ, but ultimately betrayed him. And I believe the same is true with the, true with the Antichrist in Christianity. He will appear friendly to Christianity, but ultimately will betray uh, the truth and his ultimate destiny will be destruction. Having said that, he gives further description of the, of the Antichrist in verse 4 where he says this, He opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. So we see four activities related to deity. First of all, he opposes all other gods, all other objects of worship. He will accept no rivals. He either totally eliminates other religions or other spiritual beliefs, or he demands <coughs> priority over them. He wants to be like Jesus. He wants to be at the highest place. Secondly, he exalts himself. Not only does he oppose, he's not a secularist who says, I hate all religion. He opposes every religion except for one. He wants to be exalted. He exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship. He opposes other spiritual beliefs, but in, but he says, you can and you will worship me. It becomes the worship of man, which is exactly what's described, by the way, in the book of Revelation. Again, this is a devotional, so I don't have time for in-depth teaching. But if you were to read Revelation chapter 13, you will see that the beast will demand, and the false prophet will demand, that the beast, the Antichrist, the man of lawlessness, is worshipped by the whole world. So he will oppose other gods and objects of worship. He will exalt himself. Third, it says he will take his seat in the temple of God. I believe that's literal. I believe there will be a rebuilt temple. But other people believe that that's just using figurative language to say how he will exalt himself as if he were God and seating himself in the temple as if he were himself were on the throne. But in either case, one thing that's absolutely clear is he's claiming deity. He's, he's, when he, to take your seat in the temple is to claim deity, whether literal or figurative, it's claiming deity. And it says that, just in case we didn't get that point, it says, let me go back to it here, it says in verse 4, he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. So when we talk about the Antichrist, and we're trying to figure out who it is, and I've heard every kind of thing over the years, Somebody, there was once a big thing that Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist, or Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist, or Hitler was the Antichrist. And I know people are looking, and I appreciate the interest in the end times, but listen, the Antichrist will be a man of lawlessness, a man who will exalt himself, who will take his seat in the temple, will proclaim himself to be God, and demand that the whole world worship him. And it's as bad as like somebody like Hitler could be, he did not meet those qualifications. So we're looking for somebody who meets those characteristics, a man of lawlessness, doomed to destruction, who claims to be God, demands that the whole world worship him, and commits great blasphemy. So keep in mind, he won't be hard to identify when the time comes. We'll pick up a further description of his activities whenever we pick it up in our next devotional starting in verse 5. Have a blessed day.